everyone, we're broadcasting from the Smart Mobility Summit 2019. Several thousand people gathered in Tel Aviv, and here behind the scenes, GoTo, as a part of the Ecomotion community, is interviewing selected mobility professionals. My name is Katya Rosenauer, and here with me is Dominic Freckman, Head of Global Technology and Innovation at TE Connectivity. Hi, Dominic. Hi, Katya. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Dominic, before we begin, we're going to play a little game. I expect you to answer fast and honestly to my questions. Okay. So, uh, bicycle or car? Bicycle. Train or plane? Train. Swimming or running? Swimming. Car sharing or taxi? Car sharing. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Amazon or AliExpress? AliExpress. Elevator or stairs? Stairs. Wow, good for you. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dominic, uh, TE Connectivity is quite a big company, but not really well known to consumers. Uh, could you tell me what you guys do? You're 80,000 people, right? Yes, we are 80,000 people. Yeah, big company, global company, but what we have in the name is what we do is connectivity. So we are a connectivity enabler whether it's power, data, signal, and in many industries, we want to provide seamless, reliable connectivity. So we're talking about high-speed data, high-voltage signal for automotive, aerospace, rail, industrial, data centers, anywhere to help a more connected and productive so environment. So you are the one establishing physical infrastructure? Yes. We make physical connectors, cables, connectivity to enable a lot of the connectivity that we rely on and prefer to have in our lives every day. Can you provide a couple of examples from the mobility industry of the uh, solutions that you've enabled? For example, I mean, in very actual devices are charging. We provide the high voltage connectivity within a car that enables electric mobility. We provide high-speed data connectivity to connect sensors to a compute system. We provide wireless connectivity to connect devices to the cloud, to the infrastructure. So these are very specific examples. So basically, without the infrastructure that you establish, uh, all those services wouldn't have been possible. We are the right? basic physical layer. And on top of that, you have the software, you have the services, but the really where actually the electrons go around to enable it. That's wow. what we make. Wow, that's yes. pretty amazing. Uh, when we spoke before we began, you mentioned that uh, you are the person working on an intersection of uh, product and technology and external world, and you are contributing to building a roadmap for the company, and you said it's for the five years, right? <laughs> Why? So this is an amazing and a very long uh, cycle for a roadmap. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? Like, so long, what's in there? It's interesting that you say long because for some people it's short, but yes, we try to have a really a lookout for the next next generation in order to be better prepared because we want to anticipate the needs and the requirements, what's coming. Because especially if you make hardware, it takes a while to actually put these products together and make them, as we heard, in a scalable and cost-efficient way on large on a large scale. So this is something that I think sometimes people forget how much it takes to get physical stuff done and produced so you can actually use it in everyday life. So can you maybe talk about your uh, TA Connectivity's vision of the future, you know, in terms of mobility, what are, you, what are you preparing for? What kind of infrastructures are you establishing right now so that tomorrow we will have those, you know, services that we take for granted? <laughs> I can start with my business unit, which is automotive. For example, we talk electric mobility. In order to have electric mobility, Everybody talks about fast charging. If you want to have fast charging, you need to have the right materials in order to enable all this fast charging. So we need to develop the right materials, the right connectors to have this. When we talk about connected, whether it's connected or automated driving, how do you connect all these sensors? Uh, and how? I don't know. High-speed data, right? We make really those connectors that go into a sensor to the supercomputer from the supercomputer, let's say, to the antenna, and then from the antenna to the cloud infrastructure, we built the data centers that need to crunch and host all this vast amount of data that's coming. All this infrastructure, this is 
you know, that's why we try to listen, what are the needs in the future? How much data is really coming towards us? Where does this data needs to be distributed? Who are the end users? What type of form of, yeah, this is all the things that we try to put together now that they are ready to be used with software and algorithms from all these companies that we see around us. So my understanding that with uh, autonomous vehicles and connected vehicles, we haven't even started yet, right? The, if we're talking about the amounts of data that would need to be processed, we're not, you know, even like scratching a little bit. So what's the, I mean, how are you working on that? How are you estimating the scale that uh, needs to be there? Which is why we try to talk to as many players in the ecosystem as possible. We talk to the chip companies, they are in the beginning of the chain. We talk to the sensor people, how much data are they generating? But then you have other players that try to make everything more efficient and that crunch it with algorithms and do the processing. Then we talk to the tier ones, the OEMs, all the players in the industry, where do you see your needs coming from? Where does it go? What type, what form? It's really, and this is also why I'm here, right? I want to really talk to the people that are upfront that are coming up with the next systems or the next technologies to see what does it mean for us? How can we prepare the next generation technologies and parts to enable this? I have to see the future very clearly because my understanding is that these things require very, very large upfront investments. Uh, are there things that you uh, in the past maybe uh, made mistakes about? Like, are they like, if you're allowed to speak about things you yeah, anticipated no, and like they never happened? I think it's not even a mistake that we made, but for example, electric mobility came up, it's not just now, it already happened before. I think I found a New York uh, Times archive from 1960 or I'm not talking that like long a, ago. Okay. <laughs> Maybe 10, 15 years ago, there was a first wave. Basically, whenever oil got expensive, people freaked out and they said, oh, we need something else. The moment oil got cheap, they're like, eh, we go back to oil. But now it's not just driven by the oil price. So we had this push into electric mobility before. Oil price came down. People said, never mind electric, we're back to oil. And were you there with the infrastructure ready? And you're like, oh. Yes, exactly, right? Like We had things ready. I was like, uh-oh. And then everybody was kind of back paddling. But now it's not because of the just price driven, but now we have government and regulatory and affairs. Environmental and this is what, issues. what we've heard before, right? The moment there's policy, then it's actually. So now we have products we've had developed in the past and we can actually bring them back. Ah, so here. you're actually leveraging uh, things yes. you've developed uh, long ago. Oh, this is uh, very interesting. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your personal choices as a consumer? I understand like as a business person, you're thinking, you know, five years from now. As a consumer, are you uh, like practicing what you preach? Are you uh, like moving towards like electric and uh, new mobility? Personally, I'm very much into biking, but also it's my hobby. <laughs> I like to do a lot of cycling. I'm also very much a public transport person it's because I like to actually read or relax and do not want to focus on the driving so I do try to be as efficient in my mobility choices but I also know there are some cases I used to live in the US and it was just really really hard to go without a car so I did have a car but then again try to share as much as possible carpool that's what I was trying to do, yes. And now you live in uh, Switzerland? I live in Switzerland. Public transport is great. Sometimes you don't even have to look at when the next train is coming. It's really, it's a great public transport experience. So do you think that uh, public transport, the quality of the public transportation network is something, you know, that uh, really impacts the way people move, you know, like, kind of like, it's just like such a basic thing, like infrastructure, right? And I've experienced it much more in Europe than in the US. I mean, there's ex exceptions, but if you don't have to think about it, when is my next train coming? What bus do I need to take? You know, even after midnight. I mean, public transport shouldn't stop at midnight, right? You just it doesn't just in Switzerland? Switzerland's a little different. <laughs> Berlin, Berlin is a great example. You just always go to the next station and you know something is coming. So it should be convenient and it should be affordable. I mean, it always will be subsidized, but 
this is how you can get people to actually use it. So I and reliability, right? So yes. that, uh, yes. whenever <laughs> I uh, see, uh, whenever I look around, I see uh, some mode of transportation that uh, I can use. Yep. Convenience, reliability, and obviously the price needs to fit as well. Uh, my understanding is that it's your second time here uh, at the summit in Tel Aviv as well. Uh, my second time in Tel Aviv. I came for EcoMotion back in June, and now this is my second time, yes. So what are you learning so far, and what kind of companies are you looking to connect with here? There is two types of companies that I'm looking for. On the one hand, as I said, we are a supplier with decades of experience, so if there are young companies, startups, new entrants in this player of automotive or transportation or mobility, if we can help with our experience on either technologies or products, we're happy to do so. On the other hand, obviously, I'm also interested in companies, products, technologies that can help us as a company to deliver and develop our own products and technologies faster or better. So it's like an in and out. Okay. Thanks so much, Dominique. Uh, it was a pleasure and uh, good luck to you in your cycling uh, activities and uh, <laughs> infrastructure developing activities.